Sometimes in the many years that I have been a priest, I have met people who told me, yes, I do believe in Jesus. I do believe in the Bible, but I do not believe in the church. Now, dear friends, I am the last one to say that everything in our Catholic Church has always been perfect. But all the same, I also believe that in spite of all imperfections, this church is not something made only by man, but that it is instituted by the will of Jesus himself. It is he who founded the church as a community of disciples through which he wanted to bring his salvation to the rest of the world. It is he who appointed 12 apostles in this church. And it is he who wanted this special authority to be further continued in their subsequent successors, the Pope, the bishops, and on a lower level, the priests. Dear friends, without priests, our church cannot fully exist and flourish. St. John Vianney once used to say, leave a village without a priest for 20 years and they will worship animals. Now, this saying of John Vianney may be a bit of an exaggeration, but all the same, fancy for one moment a Catholic community without priests and see what you have left. In Holland, where, as you know, I come from, on paper, we have about, I say on paper, you understand me, that doesn't mean a thing, but for the practice, but on paper we have about five million of Catholics. In the years of my childhood, we had 14,000 priests, one four zero zero zero, 14,000 priests. And more than 50% of the Catholics were still faithfully coming to the Sunday Mass. Now, right now, we have about 4,000 priests left. A tremendous drop of 10,000. And the regular church attendance has gone down to an average of 1%. During weekdays, the church of my childhood is closed most of the time. There is only one Sunday Mass every third week, and the rest are communion services attended by less people than we usually have here in a normal weekday mass. And of course, there has been a steep decline in other areas as well. A decline in the number of baptisms, a decline in the number of marriages, of confessions, religious instructions, confirmation and sacrament of the sick, not to speak about other things. It has all gone down the drain dramatically. And is that surprising? Because whatever else may have caused this religious decline, which is fantastic and which is absolutely uh, traumatic for me, me who have been living first in a flourishing, externally flourishing church and is now seeing this, 
because whatever else may have, have caused this religious decline, one of the main reasons is certainly also the declining number of priests. What can you expect in a church, in any church for that matter, if the numbers of priests have become so pitifully small? That is why today, on Vocation Sunday, we are asked by the church to pray for more religious vocations. And also to pray for good priests. Because if the priests are not holy, they may be numerous, may have a fantastic number of priests, but if the priests are not holy, then the church is in serious trouble as well. At the same time, in all sorts of ways, you are asked to pray for the priests we already have and to give them your loving support. It is not at all so simple to be a good priest, especially not for a beginner. And I always feel surprised when I meet people who do not seem to understand that. How come, I ask myself, that some people seem to think that every priest turns automatically into a saint by the sheer power of his ordination. Why do so many people think that it is always easy for a priest to pray or to preach? What makes them think that a priest is never really tempted by sin against purity or greed or anger? Why do they think that a priest can never have a crisis of faith and should know all the answers and should always keep smiling to his parishioners even if the burdens and demands of his sheep are dropping on his head like a ton of bricks? So please, dear friends, pray, pray for your priests and give them your loving support. Not necessarily hugging and kissing him. You may do that also if you like, but it's not what we ask for. And you might be critical even, as long as it is construct constructive and loving. Most of all, help them by your own example of holiness. I recently read the statistics of a country in fact, one of the first countries where priests were accused of the sexual misbehavior we all can read about so much in our daily newspapers. Well, according to the statistics of this country, I have been told that almost half of the marriages end up in divorce, also amongst Catholics. Many young men and women do not even bother anymore to get married in church or in the registry, for that matter. They just live together. There are millions of one-parent family, families where the children grow up without a father or a mother. Premarital sex is common even amongst teenagers, and so are abortions, the plague of this time. The virtue of chastity is laughed at. Pornography in all its forms, even child pornography, is a common thing also amongst lay people, not to speak about other vices like drug abuse and violence and robbery. Now, is it surprising that in this kind of country there have also been priests who began to go in the wrong direction? I am sure eventually every church gets exactly the kind of priests it deserves.
The events we Catholics in Singapore are certainly better off than in the places I mentioned. Praise the Lord, there is still a lot of zeal here and we still have young priests. Though we could have many more, we also have a beautiful seminary in Pongol. And since today's collection is for the purpose of this seminary, I would like to ask you today to give it your most generous contribution. But giving money for the seminary is only one thing. The greatest problem is how to get the students. And I think the best contribution we all can give to that problem is that by our prayer, by our loving support, and by the high quality of our own Christian life, we create such a spiritual climate in our church and society that priestly vocations really will flourish. Amen.